Green. But I mastered that style. It's like the five deadly venoms. So all he had to do was get next to a nigga like that. He could destroy it. Believe in that. Real. We plan to take the same strategy we use with Death Row West. Mind over matter. Taking all our weaknesses and making it into our strength. That all these people talk about an East Coast, West Coast war. They like the Judas was to Jesus. They only here to cause confusion. We here to bring money and to bring change. They here to cause confusion. All these weak rappers, Nas, all these suckers, they battling off of East and West like this is a game. This ain't no game. If this was chess, we'd be yelling checkmate three years ago because we've been beat these It's not a game. Fight World is your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. The only way for me to come back is this Ego Valley. Now, I had to drop an Ego Valley video because of this very topic. I did an Ego Rumor Mill video about Canelo Alvarez possibly facing Liam Smith. Again, nothing is set in stone, but different conflicting reports. Liam Smith said he was offered a contract. Um, it's just something in the boxing circuit that is circulating as a potential option for Canelo Alvarez. And I voice my opinion like I always do. I keep it real with you guys and explain why that shouldn't be the next fight for Canelo Alvarez. There's clearly better options, more meaningful fights, even if you're looking for a belt, even at the championship level. Now, this wouldn't be so bad. A lot of people agree with me, and it's not just about solely agreeing with me, but with new media, and what I'm gonna show you guys in this video, if you disagree with me, explain what you disagree with. That's point blank period. That's the easiest way to put it. And the thing with boxing, I'm just gonna say it straight out. There's a lot of fanatical fans they don't exercise any type of logic. They say or act in the comments like they disagree with you, but they will not for the life of them explain what they disagree with. So there was some, some backlash or whatever you wanna call it, some resistance, if you will. So we're gonna explore this again and again and again and again. And if this fight gets happened, it, it gets made, then we're gonna talk about it again. I don't think it's a good fight. And the thing with boxing fans, there's a lot of fans that are just completely just out of their mind when it comes to liking a fighter a lot of people have this notion that if you like a guy you have to agree with every single decision he makes in his career i told you guys on my channel several times mike tyson roy jones prince nasim muhammad ali those are my favorite fighters rest in peace to muhammad ali favorite fighters all the time those are my favorite fighters right does that mean I have to agree with every single decision that Mike Tyson has made? I'm a huge Mike Tyson fan, but he's at press conferences. He's like, yeah, I'm a fuck you T, love me faggot. I don't condone that. I wouldn't have said that, but that's him. He's his own person. You know what I mean? That's like me justifying why Mike Tyson said that. Well, technically, even though he's not gay, he said that he was going to fuck him till he loves him based on the fact of the reporter had a remark that like, I'm not going to try to justify that. Just the same way I wouldn't expect some people to justify when a fight shouldn't happen. But oh no, only in boxing you get these fanatical fans who will attempt to make it sound like I'm being biased and oh you hate Canelo. That's why you made a video. I don't, I actually like Canelo. I like Triple G, I like Canelo. But fair is fair. If Triple G and Canelo and Canelo vacates, I'll tell you who I think is fair in that situation, which is what you see in the clip at the beginning with Pauli Malignaggi. He said the same thing. He said, hey guys, I'm a boxing analyst. If I say something about Amir Khan, I don't think he'll beat Canelo, then they say I'm a hater and I hate Khan. That's what people do to me all the time. They say, oh, because I have a certain standpoint, I just keep it real and tell you what I see, right? They say, oh, you hate Canelo. You hate Triple G. So when there's an issue with both of them, since I allegedly hate everybody, then how do I pick a side if I hate Canelo and I hate Triple G? So get out of your feelings, get out of your emotions. It has nothing to do with hate. I just tell you how I see it and I explain it. And th this is the thing with hate. Let me tell you guys uh, a quick synopsis of what hate is. Hate is if you hate somebody, you don't care what you're saying. You don't, you don't care about being held accountable. Oftentimes, if you hate somebody, you're gonna say whatever to dig deep, throw dirt on their name, mud on their name. That's all you care about. If it's true, if it's not, you don't care. You just wanna demean them, embarrass them in public, things like that. So I'm not on these videos saying, oh, Canelo, Alva scares and all this stuff. I'm not calling names and, and stuff like that. What I am doing is explaining why I don't think Canelo versus Liam Smith should happen. So again, a lot of people, this this whole boxing generation is, is soft. 
They think if you have any level of constructive criticism, if you make this point, if you think this person won a fight, then you're hating on the other person or you have this grudge against them or you're racist or you're biased. It has nothing to do with it. There are people that are biased, extremely biased and things like that. But I call it like I see. I can't explain and speak for nobody else. So it has nothing to do with hating Canelo. In fact, let me show you new media. This is how I do it on new media. And this is a funny thing about how this whole hate game works in, in the world of boxing. When people don't have a standpoint and they know what you're saying, there's some legitimacy to it. And what you're saying actually makes sense. And they don't have anything to rebuttal what you're saying. What they often do will, they'll say, oh, you hate him. You're racist. And they'll just throw something out there just to distract and deflect from the situation at hand. If I hate Canelo so much, then why can't fans come up with an educated reasoning why he should fight Liam Smith next? Now again, this is what I want to show you. Seven months ago, seven reasons Canelo Alvarez beats Miguel Cotto. And if you click 145,000 views, ton of comments on there. If you go to that video, they were saying the same thing about Miguel Cotto. Oh, you picked Canelo. What has he done? Canelo's overrated. You hate Cotto. You have some grudge against Cotto. You hate Puerto Ricans. Now, when Canelo's in the hot seat, when we're talking about this Liam Smith potential fight, I speak my mind and all of a sudden, I hate Canelo now. But I didn't hate him when I made the seven reasons Canelo beat Miguel Cotto. And that was considered a 50-50 fight. A lot of people were picking Cotto. So that's, that's how this boxing game works. If you say anything, any level of criticism, a lot of times people are going to distract and try to deflect and say, oh, you hate this and you're racist and you have this grudge. But I advise you guys as real boxing fans, read between the lines, see what people are saying, like see what was said. Don't just pick up a book, read one chapter and close it and be like, oh, that's what the book's about. Read it from start to finish. So all my videos are up. I don't delete videos, things like that. You guys can see what I said and when I said it about all these fighters. So it has nothing to do with hating Canelo. It has something to do with this fight shouldn't be made, in my opinion. You know what I mean? If I hated Canelo, I wouldn't have went to his last fight in Vegas and, and paid all the travel expenses and stuff like that. But back to this situation, Canelo versus Liam Smith is not the fight that should happen next. And I'm going to explore that a little bit more. You could also check this first video out. And um, I explain why I don't think the fight should happen. Now, here's another thing I noticed with people who actually do try to justify this type of stuff. They come up with these desperate attempts to justify why this fight should be made because they're so willing to go with whatever their favorite fighter or the fighter they like says. And that's, this just shouldn't be how boxing operates. Like this comment. Alex Rivas, HBO wants more UK subscribed and they love boxing. HBO is using Canelo to make HBO bigger on the UK. Do you think Canelo can fight someone without HBO giving the green light? Triple G fight HBO. Don't want the fight now. They want the fight to get bigger. That's all it is, business. Now, again, you oftentimes get fans who... They just make stuff up. You don't work for HBO, so how do you know that HBO doesn't want a Canelo versus Triple G fight? Especially since HBO is dealing with budget cuts, and they haven't had a big mega fight, especially on their own, in quite some time. You know what I mean? Canelo Khan did okay. It didn't do any cra crazy numbers. But this year, they have a, they've had some good fights like Salido Vargas, but um, the numbers haven't come back for that particular fight. So... Again, HBO, why would they not want a, a mega fight between Canelo and Triple G? You just made that up, saying HBO is not going to give the green light to the Canelo Triple G fight. Where have you ever heard that? Why would HBO not want that fight? That's a mega fight. They've invested a lot of time, energy, money, giving both guys, Canelo and Triple G, their own main event fight dates on their network, where there's pay-per-view for both of them. They both had HBO pay-per-views, and they both had HBO regular main events. Canelo, Kirkland, Triple G, Wade, etc. So again, why would HBO not give it a green light to a mega fight that the world wants to see, right? And then you say something else about HBO wants more, and this is what new media does. HBO wants more UK subscribe. Now, I don't know all the particulars. I used to live in England, but this was years ago. And um, I don't even know if HBO is just readily available on all cable packages anyway. I think Sky Sports, Box Nation and stuff really handle um the fight so i don't know what you're talking about hbo wants more uk like if you watch the canelo versus khan i think they they had to sell the the rights to um 
Box Nation, and Box Nation is the one that distributed it for the UK. So that's, again, something else that doesn't make sense. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then finally is using this notion that this is why Canelo and Triple G can't happen and the Liam Smith fight makes so much sense is Canelo just finished fighting a guy from the UK. His name was Amir Khan. Amir Khan has been on all the networks, HBO, Showtime, PBC, Spike. He's been on all the networks. He's way more of a household name and a bigger name with bigger fights, a better resume at the time he fought Canelo, right? Uh, former Pacquiao sparring partner. So how many UK fighters does Canelo have to really fight? You know what I mean? Using your philosophy or your logic or whatever, how many fighters from the UK is Canelo really supposed to be fighting? Again, that's an excuse. HBO wants more UK. So by Canelo knocking out a more popular UK fighter in a fight that would clearly be bigger, Amir Khan versus Canelo is clearly going to be bigger than a Canelo versus Liam Smith. In fact, if Liam Smith and Canelo were to happen, I don't even know if that would be on HBO pay-per-view, to be honest. I don't know if HBO would even take that gamble because the numbers would be terrible, right? At least in the States. I don't know about the UK because the fans are really loyal. But so again, he knocked out a fighter from the UK in his very last fight. So you're telling me he has to fight another UK because HBO is just trying to build up that demographic, that market? Again, it doesn't make sense. If Canelo's not fighting the right fights, just say that. Instead of making these excuses for, oh, he has to fight more UK. Because realistically, Canelo can make middleweight. He, he's clearly rehydrating to what about a Golovkin does on a fight night. So, And he was the middleweight champion after beating Canelo or Cotto and before he vacated the belt. So the point being is if you're going to fight a UK and that's really what HBO's goal is, why wouldn't you fight a more regarded UK fighter like Billy Joe Saunders, Chris Eubanks Jr.? If if that's the market you really want to tap into, why would you go to the guy who's considered there's the UK currently has, I want to say about 13 or 14 champions, right? From Kell Brook to Tyson Fury, Billy Joe Saunders, ton of guys right now. Anthony Joshua now. So they have about 13 to 14 active UK champions, Lee Selby. And you mean to tell me out of all of those guys I just named to build HBO wants to build the Canelo fight so much that they're going to match him with the guy out of 13 to 14 UK champions who probably has the weakest resume out of all those champions. You know what I mean? Anthony Joshua, all of them, because all those guys, even Joshua, he only has 16 fights or whatnot. He's about to fight Dominic Brazil. He fought Gary Corners. He fought a guy to beat him in the Ams, Dillian White, who was undefeated. He fought, um, what's his name, Prince Charles Martin. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's a horrible that's a horrible rationale, Alex, um, that HBO wants a UK market because again, he's not. It's not like Liam Smith is ringing bells in a popular name. So let's keep going. Now, the other thing I noticed when it comes to Canelo Alvarez and the radical fans, not all Canelo fans, but the radical ones, what I noticed, in, it happens with every popular fighter, Mayweather, Pacquiao, Cotto, Canelo, whoever's popular, they always have radical fans that say radical things. And when their fighter's in the hot seat for whatever reason, and there's no valid excuse, like Canelo vacating instead of fighting Triple G, what they do is try to defer and deflect. I'm reading comments, but what about Mayweather IV? Mayweather beat his wife. What about Gennady Golovkin? He he fights bums. Like, realistically, we're talking about Canelo versus Liam Smith. What does Triple G or Mayweather have to do with Canelo and his decision and his team's possible decision to fight a guy like Liam Smith? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you went to a traffic court, a lot of times I've been to traffic court before. Let's say I got a speeding ticket and I was trying to see the judge to have the, the ticket removed and dismissed or whatever for speeding. And... Oftentimes in traffic court, you have the people in the little seats behind you, you're speaking with the judge, and then they're waiting to get seen for their particular case. So if the judge is like, hey, Ego, why should we dismiss this speeding ticket that says you were going 35 and a 25, right? And then I would have to plead by case. I can't just look behind me and say, oh, but he, look at him. He got a DUI. He was drunk driving. He crashed into a tree. Like, even if that's the truth, the guy's got a DUI, I can't point the finger at him when I'm talking to the judge about what I'm there for, which is the speeding ticket, you can't defer and deflect and all of a sudden, oh, but he got a DUI, he beat his wife. Do you know that? He don't pay child support. Like None of that has nothing to do with me getting the speeding ticket and that's why I'm in front of the judge. You know what I'm saying? And that's a classic move from boxing fans. Canelo versus Liam Smith is 
what's in talks. And then all of a sudden they start wanting you to talk about stuff that has nothing. Oh, Laura, what about Mayweather? Triple G, he's fighting Dominique Wade. And since we're on Triple G, let's talk about it. Triple G, I don't, I think Canelo clearly has a better resume than Triple G. See how fair and honest I am? I think Canelo, without a doubt, has a better resume than Triple G. But I do think Team Triple G wants to fight Canelo. And that's a mega fight that the fans will want to see. There's money in the fight. It makes sense from a business perspective. At one point, it was two champions unifying before he vacated, before Canelo vacated his belt. And it's a good fight based on a stylistic matchup. And it would test Golovkin and it would test Canelo. So, it, I mean, I'm all for it to see who would come out on top, right? And no matter what you bend and, and twist it, people are, people are saying, oh, yeah, Canelo should fight Liam Smith because Golovkin fought Wade. But... That doesn't even make sense because Golovkin has nothing to do with it. Furthermore, Wade was Golovkin's IBF mandatory. So that's a contractual obligation. He had to fight that dude at some point, right? So he was next in line. Canelo's been fighting at 155, Canelo Wade. So Liam Smith isn't his mandatory. So just right there, that fact alone is some completely different because Golovkin was fighting a mandatory. Furthermore, the only reason he fought Wade instead of fighting Canelo is because in December, Team Triple G, Team Canelo, they had that meeting and decided Canelo's team proposed that they have voluntary fights in between to build up a mega fight between Canelo and Triple G. And they were supposed to negotiate if they both were victorious, which they both were. Canelo fought Amir Khan, knocked him out, and Dominique Wade was destroyed and knocked out by Golovkin, right? So you can't throw out the, the fish and the bait or whatever and say, oh, but Triple G fought Wade. He did fight Wade. Wade it was unproven just like Liam Smith is unproven, but one was a mandatory. And that mandatory only stemmed from Team Canelo actually offering, hey, we know you're the mandatory Triple G, but we want one more tune-up fight, basically. We want to fight in between. And then all of a sudden, you had that fight, you knocked out Khan, and then now you drop the belt. Say you still allegedly want to fight Triple G. So that's what happens with these fans. You guys take apples and bullets, apples and D batteries. It's not... It's not even the same, it's the same subject that you guys talk about. So, um, I posted this on my Instagram and I'm just, let's look at some of the comments and I'll wrap this video up. Oh, I was just talking about Liam Smith. He won via second round stoppage over opponent pre-drag radio civic. His record is 23 and 0 with 13 KOs. Right. And I was just talking about this and see this, this, the whole thing with the Canelo is Canelo is a good fighter and he's been fighting at 155 so all of a sudden why are you fighting at 154 because if he were to fight Liam Smith for title purposes I don't think it can be at 155 because that would be technically middleweight and that's what people said they say Golovkin see you have to analyze what people said some Canelo diehards were saying that Golovkin needed to drop down to 155 to fight Canelo because he needed Canelo right and Canelo has a better resume, which it is true. Canelo is the A side with a better resume. But um, whether you agree with the 155 or not, the 155 allows you that's technically anything over the 154 mark is technically middleweight, right? So 155 to 160 would technically fall under middleweight, even though we all know middleweight is truly the 160 mark. That's what it's been. That's what everyone else, other than Canelo and um, maybe even Cotto were fighting at when they were fighting for middleweight titles right so that's that's one thing so if he were to fight liam smith to me that means he would have to lose the extra pound and actually fight at 154 so in your last fight since mayweather all of it all of canelo's fights since mayweather including mayweather have been catchweight but everything after that has been a catchweight of 155 from angulo to lada to james kirkland to kodo to amir khan that's all been at a catchweight of 155 so when Golovkin becomes your mandatory, why are you all of a sudden in your last five fights you fought at 155, this man-made Canelo weight division, why all of a sudden would you want to drop an extra pound to fight Liam Smith for a title? Again, okay, he's a title holder, but his name isn't ringing bells, and he's the, le he's the least accomplished out of all of the 154-pound top-level guys who are current or former champions. Resume will tell you that. Austin Trout, better resume. Austin Trout has wins over Miguel Cotto, Canelo's brother, people like that. He's been in the ring with Edislandi Lada. He had a close, close recent fight with the Charlo brother, right? 
You look at the Charlo brother, a champion, who's been in there with Trout and a couple other people. You know what I'm saying? And I, I mean, just Trout alone is better than really anyone I've seen Liam Smith on his record. And those are and Trout is is kind of like a middle of the pack guy right now in the division. But you look at the top guys who are looking like they have a budding future. J Rock Williams. He doesn't necessarily have the resume, but that's a stylistic matchup that would be a great fight, right? And he has the, the promise and, and prospects. So if Canelo were to beat an undefeated up-and-coming lion like that, give him his first blemish, then that would be way more impressive than beating Amir Khan, who's been stopped in lighter divisions and never had fought over 147 pounds as a pro, right? You look at the top-level guys like Edison Lada, a rematch. That makes all the sense in the world. You look at Demetrius Andre, Willie Nelson winner. I mean, these are all great fights and stylistic fights that make sense. So Canelo's in a very, very difficult spot to me. You can say whatever. I like him as a fighter, but it is what it is because he's been playing this Canelo weight game for so long. Now, if he jumps back to 154, why would you jump back to 154 and fight the least accomplished person there, which is Liam Smith? You know what I mean? And I'm talking about purely resume. This is not, I hate, I mean... I could say stuff about Liam Smith. I'm not making fun of him. I mean, he actually kind of looked, he reminds me of Elliot from E.T. Reese's Peace. <laughs> That's what he reminds me of in this picture. But um, I'm just talking from a, a boxing perspective. And that's not to throw shade. Liam Smith, who's he beat? I'm pretty sure he would admit that. I mean, if you put, if you ask Liam Smith who he's beat and, and is, does he have a better resume than Lada? I mean, unless he's a liar, I don't think he would even say that himself so um, we're just really talking facts here um what are the comments who the fuck is this owner of a used car dealership wow see boxing fans don't even know who liam smith is you believe this bullshit yo canelo acting like a bitch shaking my head i'm losing respect for him used oh uh, um see and this is the other thing this is a perfect example so i had this whole diatribe explaining my standpoint right about I don't think this is the right fight for Canelo. And then you see people just put Team Canelo. That's it. So you're not even saying that the Liam Smith, this is this is the funny thing about boxing. So many foolish pride people, where I don't care who you like. You like Canelo, you like Canelo, that's cool. I like Canelo too, but Team Canelo. So you, you're, you're just telling me this is on some gang banging stuff. So you don't even care who's right or wrong. You don't care if the fight doesn't make sense. You don't care if he fights Liam Smith, a guy with no real pedigree in the division no real chance to beat canelo you don't care about these things you're just team canelo ride or die and that, that's just that's ridiculous to me um that people can't be real with themselves like i said earlier mike tyson roy jones these are my favorite fight roy jones perfect example my favorite fighter like i i, I remember I, I even bought the roy jones from walmart or something roy jones greatest hits just to watch it and I love it. Just his music video, everything, right? Y'all must have forgot. But you check my old channel videos. I was the first one saying that he should hang him up a long time ago just because I, I seen a fade. And when fighters don't look like the, the same person that they were in their prime and it's visible and noticeable, like you're losing to people you shouldn't, I'll say that. But you get a lot of people who aren't going to be as honest as me and whoever their favorite fighter is, they're just going to ride to the wheels fall off. So if, if it's a cherry pick or if it's a fight that shouldn't happen, they're still going to be like, yeah, this is a great fight. This is my other thing. If this was such a great fight with Canelo versus Liam Smith, then how come nobody was requesting this fight? I heard no mentions of Liam Smith in general definitely pitted against Canelo. I didn't hear anybody talking about that. But now you see diehard Canelo fans who are trying to, instead of just admitting, hey, this chronological order that Canelo, the motions that Canelo's going through doesn't make him look good. He was the lineal middleweight champion after beating Cotto. He fought a welterweight who was considered chinny in American, knocked him out after struggling for the first four rounds or so. Then he was supposed to negotiate with his mandatory, Gennady Golovkin. And he says, you know what? I'm not going to be forced into any deadlines, these artificial deadlines. I told the WBC I'm dropping the belt. So he got a lot of backlash from that. And then now the latest rumor is Canelo is in talks to possibly fight Liam Smith, who's virtually the the weakest link at 154 in terms of the, the crop of guys. You look at the top, top tier guys that the boxing world considers the top and they're linking him to him. So, you know what I mean? Instead of people just being real 
you can like Canelo all day, but you, fair is fair. You got to admit when the fight doesn't make sense. And that's how I know some of these boxing fans are real life fake. Because if it's a fighter they don't like, Keith Thurman, when Keith Thurman was fighting Luis Colazzo, or when Mayweather fights Birdo, people, if they don't like those guys or they don't like Heyman, what do they say? Oh, this is ridiculous. Why would Floyd fight Birdo? Why would Keith Thurman fight Colazzo? Oh my gosh, Danny Garcia's fighting Guerrero and Pauli Malignaggi. This is ridiculous. But Canelo, after knocking out Khan, a welterweight, and supposed to fight Triple G, if he fights Liam Smith, who? what's worse? Danny Garcia versus Robert Guerrero? You mean to tell me Robert Guerrero, in your mind, is uh, a worse fight than Canelo versus Liam Smith? Really? Robert Guerrero has been in there with Orlando Salido, who just had a hell of a performance last night versus Francisco Vargas. A lot of people said he won that fight. And he fought Salido, who cheated or had drugs in his system, PEDS. Um, Robert Guerrero has been in there with Floyd Mayweather, Keith Thurman. And people said Danny Garcia versus Guerrero was just so blasphemous and disrespectful to the sport. So what is Canelo versus Liam Smith, really? You know what I mean? You talk about Berto. berto has been in there with Guerrero. He's been in there with some names, Victor Ortiz. Guys like that. And people hated when Mayweather was going to fight him. So fair is fair. Keep it real. Is this a good fight? Is this the fight that should happen next? And the worst thing for, for Canelo, again, is he's in one of the most stacked divisions. 147 is probably the most stacked. Then 154 and heavyweight are probably neck and neck for um, the talent pool that they have in those particular divisions and the level of competition. There's a lot of good guys in any given day any given saturday or friday whenever they fight those guys could pull the upset you've seen it even trout trout wasn't considered necessarily the cream of the crop but he gave charlo run for his money you know what i'm saying so there's a there's a good crop willie nelson versus demetrius andre that's a good fight and you mean to tell me that Eslandi lada has to fight vanis mata rosen an olympian who was with freddie roach who gave him a tough first fight who clearly has power knocked down isha smith been in there with the charlo brothers uh willie nelson has to fight Demetrius Andrade and Julian Williams is trying to land big fights. He's been calling out people. The Charlo brothers are fighting Trouts and Gabe Rosados and uh, John Jackson and guys like that, right? And Canelo gets to fight Liam Smith. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is that fair? Like, I understand being the cash cow. Canelo's the A side. He's more popular than all these guys. Great. But how is that fair? At least fight. You're not going to fight Golovkin. At least fight somebody who, like, even at Austin Trout, clear that fight up. You know what I mean? Even though Austin Trout's off a loss, I would give you more credit for fighting Austin Trout or Cotto in a rematch. Even though I don't really care to see those at this particular moment, I would rather see them than a Liam Smith fight because no one knows much about Liam Smith. It's just a, a gray um, area, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, again, people will try to, oh, Triple G fought Wade. Wade was his mandatory. This is not Canelo's mandatory. So I don't know, man. It's just it's crazy to see the the level of excuses that some of the Canelo fans are making. Like, how you could be with your fighter and all that, but you got to keep it real. You know what I mean? We need to get boxing back. If this is a good fight, you explain to me how it's a good fight. Look at what people are saying. Canelo is in a position now where most of his fights will just be exhibitions and spectacles. Just literally seeing him fight anyone is supposed to be worth the price of admission. Competition is secondary to challenging himself and having an advantage for Canelo. That's that's terrible that a fan would even say that. Again, a lot of these people who leave comments, crazy stuff like that, they were saying Floyd, oh, he's ruining his legacy if he doesn't fight Pacquiao and Berto was egregious and stuff. But then they're saying Canelo fights are supposed to be exhibitions. Like, I, I don't know. I don't want to be associated with this era of boxing if that's what it's come to where you get a top-level guy, an A-side who's supposed to take over the sport of boxing, and we're supposed to see exhibition fights with, where I'm not saying you have to fight a tough challenge after tough challenge, but Amir Khan couldn't hurt Canelo. So that's and it's not like he fought Cotto. And then all of a sudden he fought Julian Williams and beat him. And then he fought Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? You fought Khan, who wasn't even a true junior middleweight, let alone a middleweight. And you fought him pretty much at middleweight technically because it was 155. You know what I'm saying? Julio Cesar Chavez, guys like that, those are supposed to be guys that are having exhibition fights. Guys who are retired, not guys who are active and um, supposed to be at that elite level. So it is crazy to see fans talk like this talk like their promoters you know what i mean 
this kind of hurts the sport of boxing. It, it's worth the price of admission to see him fight anybody. I don't agree with that at all. Like I said, there's tons of options, and that's Canelo's. He's he's a rock in between a hard spot because there's a lot. There's too much competition in or around his division. You got Triple G like give my belts. You got the killers at 154. It's just it's gonna look bad if he fights Liam Smith. I don't know what else to tell anybody else. Now look at this comment. He says. A true fan will support his favorite boxers at all times. Canelo vacated the 160 belt and he's getting criticized by everyone. Y'all forget that before he's also fought good fighters like Mayweather, Lada, and Gulo Kirkland and Cotto, who was supposed to school Canelo. So Canelo doesn't just fight smaller guys, just my opinion. See, and again, I don't agree with this notion that just because someone is your favorite fighter, they're never open to any criticism. That That's not fair. That's not fair. And that's a lot, that, surprisingly, that's how a lot of people in boxing act. They act like if you criticize someone, it's merely because you hate that person. Or if you like a guy, then you have to agree with every single thing they do. I like Oscar. So every decision, everything he says, every quote, every interview, it's up my alley. You know what I'm saying? I like Canelo. So... If he vacates, that was the right decision. If he fights Liam Smith, the guy we never heard of, that's the right decision. I'm a real boxing fan from the old school. Maybe this just isn't my generation of boxing, but that's not how it works. It, it's okay to have some constructive criticism. As long as you're not threatening a man's life, you know what I mean? You don't have to call someone a bitch and pussy and say you're going to kill his family and all this extra internet shit. But you can get on here and say, I like Canelo, but Liam Smith that fight shouldn't happen and that's what i'm gonna do i don't really care you know what i'm saying if it's just what it is and i would say that for anybody but liam smith is just he's not a top dog and i i don't like that other comment says i'm not here as a boxing fan just to see him in exhibition fights you know what i mean this guy i don't even know how old he is that's gray hair I, I mean who wants to see this who wants to see a liam smith fight and again you have to ask yourself questions as a real boxing fan why would canelo his last five fights or so have been at 155. Why is he going to drop the extra pound now to fight 154? If that was the case, why didn't he drop to one? If if you were going to vacate your title anyway, right? Why didn't you drop that extra pound for Amir Khan, who already had to do all of traveling when it came to weight, when he was moving up from welterweight, which he only had three fights at welterweight. These are all facts. You can Google it. So Amir Khan only had three fights at welterweight from moving up from 140, and then he moved up to the full 155. So if you were gonna drop an extra pound and 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 whatnot for um, Liam Smith, who is a UK fighter with a, a lesser name than another UK fighter in Amir Khan, why wouldn't you do the same for Amir Khan to at least make that fight a little bit more fair? Because the Liam Smith fight. He's at least been fighting 154, so he's acclimated to 154. So he might be a bit more durable than Khan. Plus, Khan in the past has had durability issues in lighter divisions. So the Khan fight, that just that's it's kind of ridiculous that you're you're willing to flex an extra pound. It's just not looking good. You're you're willing to flex an extra pound for Liam Smith, the lesser known UK fighter, but you made Khan travel all the way up from 147, almost 10 pounds, to meet you there. You know what I'm saying? And if he fights Liam Smith at 155, like he's been doing, you guys got to do the math. If he fights Liam Smith at 155, like he's been doing, then to my knowledge, his 154 title cannot be at stake because anything it's just like a fighter not making weight. How could you fight for a junior middleweight title at a 154 if you're going to exceed 154 pounds? So to my knowledge, if Canelo were to fight Liam Smith at 155, then his title's not up for grabs. And if it's not up for grabs, then why on earth would Canelo even consider fighting a guy like that? You know what I'm saying? If you're going to fight a title holder, then you would obviously want the title to be up for grabs. But if he fights at 155, that really doesn't make sense because he won't be able to fight for Liam Smith's title. So to me, that means Canelo's going to have to drop an extra pound and make this a title fight. Bad, bad news for the Canelo train. Um, again, Triple G's down your throat. You got killers at 154. Liam Smith will not be a good look. And I'm going to do follow-up videos. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like my video as always. Hey, comment, and subscribe. Till next video's Ego signing off. You don't feel it, then it must be too real to touch.
is about to get heavy. Trying to keep me out. Trying to censor what I say because they don't like what I'm talking about. So it's wrong with the media today. Prove I'm lying and if I'm correct. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.